study collection. Today, our title is Lost in the Desert. It was on a very hot July 13th that Mark, a 35-year-old man weighing about 130 pounds, set out on a three-hour journey driving across the stretch of desert from Yuma, Arizona to Blythe, California. It was Mark's plan to get there by 11 a.m., but when it became 12.30, his fiancée, Sarah, became nervous and realized that something had to be going wrong. By 12.30 p.m., Maria Arroyo, a patrol officer, was patrolling by in the desert, and she reported finding an abandoned car on the side of the road with a damaged radiator. It matched Sarah's description of Mark's vehicle. There were shoe prints leading in the distance in the direction of some low mountains in the distance. At that point, Maria called for helicopter assistance, consulted her GPS, and relayed the exact coordinates of the base. By 1 p.m., Henry Morningstar, a paramedic and member of the helicopter crew, he reported a shirtless, hatless man wandering down a desert wash. In this part of the desert, it was 105 degrees in the shade, which there was little of. The relative humidity was less than 5%. The helicopter crew members spotted a man wandering in the desert. They had found Mark. His driver's license identified him as a missing man. He was weak, nauseous, disoriented, and complained of having a headache. His blood pressure was low, 70 over 50, and he was not sweating despite this oppressive heat. His body temperature was high as well as his body being 105 degrees. He was diagnosed with heat stroke and the paramedic noted first-degree burns on his face and on his back. Suddenly, the pilot reported that they had lost radio contact with the hospital. It was all up to Henry, the paramedic, now. It was at this point that Henry started oral rehydration with an isotonic solution that was contained electrolytes glucose, and water. As Mark recovered in the hospital, he related all of the events that had happened earlier that day. Since he was a newcomer to the desert areas, he had forgotten to bring any AV UV sunblock, and he also forgot to bring any extra water along with him on his trip from Yuma to Live. Mark recalled seeing a coyote dart out between two bushes, and he seemed to recollect hitting the animal. Since the area was isolated, his cell phone became useless. He waited by the car for a while, but then, as the sun climbed at 10 a.m., he saw a large body of water in the distance, possibly, he thought, the Colorado River. This river was, in reality, only a mirage. As he realized later, after he had walked some distance, he then became confused. He couldn't find his way back to the highway. Eventually, he became hot and threw away his shirt and hat. After he left the hospital a few months later, Mark began to notice the melanin changing in his skin, and also he began to notice moles forming on his shoulder. Eventually, they grew and they bled. Thanks again for tuning in to the Case Study Collection, where science tells all. See you next time.